Hi everybody, in the following tutorial I'm going to go through all of the sewing tools, both 2D and 3D and how they work. If you want to follow along, you can go to the link below in the caption and click and follow through to a forum post that has files that you can download and follow along with. So I'm going to start with a set of files and explain all the sewing types in Clo. So I'm going to open up this file that I have. And I'm going to close my library to give myself some more working space. Okay, so I'm going to teach first how the sewing works in 2D and then how it works in 3D and how each group of tool generally works. The sewing tools have a symbol with them that looks like a little sewing machine. And we have a few different tools. Edit sewing will let you change or edit something about the sewing. Segment sewing, free sewing. Check sewing line length isn't really a sewing tool. It's more for checking sewing relationships and their, their distances and differences. Um, the tools that actually do the sewing are basically segment sewing and free sewing. We have the same set of tools in the 3D toolbar, edit sewing, segment, and free sewing. So first I'm going to start with the group of patterns on the left hand side. If you're following along, you may want to follow these steps as I do them. I'm actually going to freeze these three yellow patterns that are floating over here. We're going to use them afterward. Um, so to do that, I'm going to select transform pattern tool, marquee this group of patterns, right click on them and choose freeze. Okay, that's going to basically freeze them and not allow simulation to affect them at all. Um, so the first type of sewing that I'm going to explain is segment sewing and that is located here. Basically, it grabs an entire segment or section between two points. So. The way it works is you grab the tool and you hover over an edge. It's going to kind of see these edges where, when you're hovering. And when you hover towards one end or another, you will see the notch kind of follow your arrow or cursor direction. You left click to put the sewing down. And then next, it's going to want to hover and grab another segment or part of another pattern or even the same pattern, depending on where you hover. And the notch direction will also follow your cursor. Generally, you don't want your sewing to be twisted. Um, so I'm going to make my notch direction match here. In the middle example, I'm actually going to reverse it so you can see what happens and sew the last section. Then just so you know, I have my fabric setting set to textured surface and that shows the backside as a different shade or a darker shade. If you don't have the fabric set to this view, textured surface view, when you simulate you will not see what I'm about to see which is the backside flip to the forward as a result of your sewing being twisted. If you're on this view it'll just look normal but as you can see it twists the fabric and you can basically adjust this if you make a mistake. The tool to change something about your sewing is edit sewing. So when you click on that to select the tool, you will then be able to hover over the sewing relationships that you created. Now, just some word of advice, the dotted lines in the middle that you see when I hover aren't grabbable in any way. The tool won't see them or click on them or right click. What you're going to want to do is right click on the sewing relationship and choose reverse sewing. So aim for the solid colored parts of your sewing when you want to reverse. Or also there is a shortcut of control B, which is very handy because that you can just left click and select it and then hit control B on your keyboard without having to right click and your reversed sewing. Now that I fix this, I'm going to hit spacebar and simulate and you see that it will turn that piece to the front. Just note that in this example, the edges of the piece aren't secured to anything, but when you have garments sewn together, cross Events sewing like is going to lead happening. to, so it's going to backtrack, hit control Z and undo that. So if you see anything like that happening with your garment, usually it means there's something wrong with the sewing relationships. To delete all of a sewing relationship, you can use edit sewing. If I just want to delete it completely, edit sewing tool, left click once to select and then hit delete on your keyboard, 
Okay, that will delete sewing. You can also marquee select an entire group of sewing. This tool will only see sewing relationships, so you don't have to worry about it selecting something different. Just hit delete and everything will disconnect. So next I'm going to go over the free sewing tool and how that works and why it's different and where it's useful. So the set of patterns on the right hand side that are yellow, we froze them in the beginning. I'm going to actually unfreeze these three panels now. So I'm going to select them in, in either window and look for unfreeze. To do this selection, I am on the select move tool in the 3D window or the transform pattern tool in the 2D window. So let's look at the set of patterns we have over here. And I actually would like you to click on the edit pattern tool. For there are a bunch of points that are randomly placed on your pattern. Sometimes this will happen with patterns and there are cases where you may want to decide to disregard some points. Basically free sewing will let you start and stop on a pattern wherever you want. So I have this shorter piece. I'm actually going to grab the full length of this first, but on my larger rectangle on the top, I don't actually have a marker over here that matches this length of 7.634. Okay. I can tell that there's no point there, but when you use this free sewing tool and you grab the shorter distance and then move to the longer section, Clo will automatically generate a point for you with this tool. So as I move and slide, it creates this little blue dot and I can choose to hit this dot or bypass it. That's how free sewing works. I can just start and stop wherever I want. In this case, I am going to match the blue dot. So I'm going to left click to finish this sewing. So to just demonstrate again, I'm going to left click to start and then lift click once to end and then I can move on to another piece, left click once to start and left click to end. It's going to auto generate a matching length for whatever I first selected and I can either hit it or move on to another point. Clearly my areas don't match up. The edit sewing tool will let you also slide sewing around. Other things like, okay, if I slide this to the end, I can slide and go past the corner. Be careful not to do that if you don't mean to. I can slide and hit the end there and then grab this end and it will give me that auto marker to match if I'd like to. So the sewing tools have a lot of versatility as far as matching areas. You don't have to split your patterns up so you have an excessive amount of points when you have the free sewing tool to auto generate this marker. So I'm going to go on and attach the rest of my pieces. So here I'm sewing from left to right and on the area I'm attaching, I'm sewing left to right. So the notch direction is matching. That is what is going to make the notch directions match. So on this end piece, if I sew from left to right on the top, but then go from right to left on the bottom, you see that the notch is always where's the direction that I click first. So that's what dictates whether this shows as twisted or not. In some practice files, I'm going to explain how you don't always want to immediately reverse sewing in the 2D window just because it looks twisted. Once we start dealing with garments that wrap around a body, it may look twisted in the 2D window, but checking the 3D window, you'll see it's actually fine. Stay tuned for that information. I'm going to hit simulate, see what we get here. Okay. Uh, I'm going to delete the areas that are messed up or fix them. So here I'm going to actually delete this. Another point about the edit sewing tool. If you want to edit the length of a sewing relationship and it butts up against another sewing relationship. So here in this area, I have a blue sewing and a green sewing that intersect right here. If you click on the intersection area, because they share the same location, Clo will have a little drop down menu asking you which one you intend to select or want to edit. 
and then I can select the green one. And now when I click back on that point, I will be moving only the green end of the sewing. I can show that again here where the green meets the red. Click to select the red. If you click on the middle or anywhere in between the end sections, you will be sliding that sewing along the edge. Now I'm going to reopen the file and explain how 3D sewing works. So 3D sewing works exactly the same where you hover, left click, and hover and left click. If you accidentally reverse anything, use the edit sewing tool. You can actually start sewing in one window and then finish in the other. Basically, as soon as you're on the tool in either window, it will register in the 2D or 3D window. The free sewing tool works just a little bit differently in the 3D window than it does in the 2D window. In the 2D window, you only have to click once to start and once to end, once to start and once to end for each section. I'm gonna undo that. So you can click once to start and double click to complete. When you move on to the other pattern in the 3D window, remember that little blue dot that was auto-generated to match the length of your first sewing? That does not generate here in the 3D window, so you won't feel any sewing like snapping to this. If you move though over into the 2D window, it will have the point there for you. Then that will allow you to like snap to it. So again, in the 3D window, it's just click once to start, double click to end, click once to start, double click to end. So now I'm going to open up this file A000. There is a function that is an extension of the segment sewing and free sewing tools that lets you very easily attach one area to multiple other areas. There is no different tool for it. It is still just the action of being on these regular tools. So I'm gonna show segment sewing first and it works as follows. You grab your one first. So I'm gonna left click and grab that edge and then you hold shift down on your keyboard. Once you hold shift, you're gonna see the sewing turn like a neon green color. And then do not let go of shift until you have clicked on all of these sections. Once you've clicked every segment and it's grabbed all the sections, you can let go of shift and it will finish and close the sewing. So this is how one to multiple works. It allows you to attach one section to multiple others. And for free sewing, it is very similar. I'm gonna grab my one first, but I'm clicking to start and clicking where I'm ending. Then I'm gonna hold shift down on my keyboard and click to start, click to end on every single piece that I wanna attach into here. Not letting go of shift throughout the whole thing, click to end. And now I'm going to release shift on my keyboard and the sewing will complete. If you make mistakes when you are sewing with this type of sewing, one to multiple, if you try and reverse any of the groups, they all reverse as a group. Okay, I'm gonna undo that. But you can just unlink them. So with the same edit sewing tool, right click on your sewing relationship and there's something called unlink M to N sewing. Once you click on that, it will release these relationships, separate them basically, and then I can go and right click on only the one that is twisted and choose reverse sewing. Another great trick with this tool is if you start the process of attaching one to multiple and you make a mistake or you accidentally start or stop where you shouldn't have, as long as you do not let go of shift on your keyboard and just hit backspace on your keyboard, 
and we'll go back one step at a time. So to just demonstrate again, I'm going to do this and then hit backspace and it's going back and undoing that. The key is that I'm not letting go of shift at all throughout this. And then once I'm done, now I can release shift. Next, I'm going to explain the M to N segment and M to N free sewing and how that works. And it's a little different from what I just went through with these two regular segment and free sewing tools. I'm going to open up this file A000 M to N sewing. Once the file is open, I'm going to close my library and give myself some more room. First, I'm going to explain M to N segment sewing. So to get to this function, you left click and hold down the little icon for just segment sewing and you're going to see the drop down for M to N. Once you choose that, you'll see the icon symbol change a little bit. So this option is to attach multiple sections to multiple other sections. Here we just have a bunch of rectangles. So for example, if you had a three piece waistband that was attaching to a pair of pants, so that would be four leg panels and only three pieces to your waistband, you might use a function like this. And I describe these sections in group. So if this were my hypothetical waistband up here, I would click, click, and click every segment and then I'm going to hit enter on my keyboard. Notice how by my cursor it says press enter to complete M sewing. Once I hit enter it will close that group and then I'm going to move on to the next section. So throughout this, the sewing does look a little bit twisted and crossed. As long as you're going in the same direction that you went on the first set of segments, you should be fine. So here now by my cursor it says press enter to complete N sewing. That is going to finish the sewing. So free sewing to get to that option, you left click and hold down on the icon till you see this drop down. Choose M to N free sewing. And for this version, because free lets you start and stop wherever you want, you click to start, click to end, click to start and click to end all throughout your pieces. And then hit enter on your keyboard. Then move on to the next set of patterns. Once finished, Hit enter again on your keyboard. Next, I'm going to explain this feature called check sewing length. When you click on this icon, a little pop-up is going to appear. If it's closed, you should expand it. And what this does is it will highlight anything that has a major difference in a bold red color. It's actually not that major of a difference that it needs to have. The default is set um, at around point 170 my yours might be a little different i think i messed with mine if these are both checked on these are essentially almost the same thing but using a different language length difference versus the ratio amount if they're both checked on the smaller difference of the two will cancel out whatever is the larger amount so a ratio of 10 percent in this case would be larger than a difference of 0 0.170 inches. I have some sewing here that is a difference of five inches or six inches roughly. And they highlight in red showing me that there is a difference larger than 0 0.170 of an inch. So there's nothing that this tool actually does as a function. It just shows you something. And if you wanna get off of it, just click on this little X symbol and you will be out of the tool. So that's it for the basics of the sewing tools. Just a recap, in general, we have two actual tools, segment sewing and free sewing, and we have the option of holding shift to attach one part to multiple parts, or we have these drop downs that let us attach multiple parts to multiple parts. Next, I'm going to go through a couple practice garments to show you some things to be aware of when you're sewing with a garment wrapped around an avatar. 
If you're following along, you can expand your library and open up file 101, Segment Sewing Practice. So this entire garment can be sewn together all with segment sewing. It's basically a practice file in only this tool. And you can sew edges here in the 2D window or the 3D window. So here, if you hover, I can click and click. You can actually start in one window and finish in another window. So I started in the 2D and then clicked and finished in 3D there. You can go choose, click on only 3D to 3D. Just always watch your notch direction. So this is a really great example. I just attached the front collar neck to the front body neckline. And in the 2D window, the sewing relationship actually looks twisted, this idea of cross sewing. Um, but this is actually just an illusion. And what is happening, it's just a result of where the pattern is placed in the 2D window. If I move it over a little bit here, you'll see those dotted lines actually don't look crossed. And what we want to rely on is the direction of the notch. So on the collar, the notch is towards the center front closure. And also on the body, the notch is going towards the center front closure. So if you have your patterns placed and you're sewing along and you do something and you think it's twisted, we highly recommend to check your 3D window first before you start reversing things. Because if I was to just go based on the 2D window, reverse this, when I simulate, this is actually twisted now. So always double check in the 3D window. Now that this is sewn, I only also have one half of my garment. I'm going to walk you through how to get the other half and some pointers about basically what to do once you get there. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit so I can see a larger space. I'm going to duplicate this set of patterns and place them on this empty side, this empty silhouette area of my 2D window. So first switch to the transform pattern tool, it's the sky, I'm going to select that entire group of patterns, right click on them and choose symmetric pattern with sewing. Now make sure that you're choosing the version under clone if you don't have the other half of your patterns. Clone pattern with linked editing, symmetric pattern with sewing. It's the only one with a shortcut of control D. And that is going to generate a duplicate I'm going to place this down. Once it generates the duplicate, it's kind of going to be in your hand. You haven't placed it down yet. Um, I advise you to put it down relatively as close to the center front marking as your maybe first set is in this case. And I'll explain why in a moment. So I'm going to put this down and you're going to see the silhouette pop over on the other side. And it's actually even still a little bit off. I want to have this sleeve really hooked over her arm once it places. So I'm going to click on that and slide it back. Okay, next I'm going to actually have to close the center front and center back pieces. For this, I'm going to use segment sewing again. So segment sewing here, click, 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 and click. That's enough for now. I'm actually just going to simulate. I know some parts are still unsewn, but well, let me close my center front too. And then uh, now I'm going to simulate. We'll see what we have. Okay, so you can still sew things shut even after you've simulated. I'm going to, I've accidentally reversed that sewing. I'm going to hit Control B and it's going to flip right away. And let me attach my collar center back. Okay, and that's it for practice for the segment sewing.
Next, I'm going to open up 102 Free Sewing Practice. So in this file, we're also going to go through the basics of arrangement points and arranging your patterns before you start your sewing. So you can follow along if you have the file, um, otherwise just watch and learn. So I'm going to use the transform pattern tool, marquee select my entire group. These patterns are all sideways, so I'm going to rotate them upwards and place half my front over the front silhouette, my back here, I'm going to put my sleeve over here. Um, here I'm working with a half garment. This is a symmetric garment, so I only actually need half the pattern to start. I do a technique of organization that goes as follows. So all of the pattern pieces that go around the wearer's left side, that's actually this side that I'm visually looking at that's on the right, that's my wearer's left patterns. I keep them over here together on this side of the silhouette. So this is the front and back of the side that wraps around the left side of the body that's sewed together, and the left sleeve. I spread it out so the sleeve will be placed kind of in between the front and the back. Um, but the key is here that the side seams are facing each other. So my, it's almost as if I slice my center back open and spread it out. Once I've organized it in my 2D workspace here, I'm going to hit this button. It's reset 2D arrangement. And that is going to update my 3D window to match the organization that I've placed in this window. Once I've done that, I want to start arranging my pieces around my avatar. When you turn the arrangement points on, some of the pieces will feel as if they're blocking the arrangement points that you actually need to get to. Um, depending on where you move and how you rotate around, you'll have a different type of view or access to these arrangement points. What I recommend is doing the following. You can select the entire group of patterns. Um, I do a selection in the 2D window like this and then move into the 3D window and just scooch them out of my way. So they are kind of floating off to the side. I can still grab them and place them on the arrangement points. So then I can just select the front, put the front down. Um, one of the great things about selection is I can be a little bit zoomed in and you can select patterns in your 2D window and basically know and be assured that they are selected in your 3D window and you can place them down. So I can be zoomed in on my avatar, select my back piece, and put these pieces down on arrangement points. I'm gonna slide my sleeve up a little bit, put the cuff, and this bottom band is part of half the front and half the back. So I'm going to generate my other side actually before I start sewing things together. We can select the whole group of patterns, right click on them and choose this option to clone the pattern with linked editing. I want a symmetric pattern with sewing. I'm going to select that and put that down pretty close to the center front marker of the avatar silhouette in the 2D window. So once I've done this, I'm going to turn my arrangement points off now. If you fail to do that, you will keep getting this, this view. See, anytime the points are on, whatever you have selected, it's giving you a preview if you want to place them there. To just get rid of that, turn your arrangement points off. You may need to scooch your garment over. So the key for the sleeve is that it's hooked around her arm enough like that. It's okay if some parts overlap um, or kind of poke into her body a little bit. The simulation is pretty forgiving. I am just going to make sure these major areas are hooked over her arm and that's fine enough. So now I'm going to start sewing this together and most of this garment needs to be sewn with free sewing. If I switch to the edit pattern tool just to show there are a lot of extra random points on my pattern in different areas that I don't generally need to worry about for sewing it together. So um, I'm also going to hide my avatar. You can do this by going here to avatar display and choose show or hide. I'm hitting the shortcut shift A to toggle that on and off. So free sewing is what we need for most of this garment. I'm going to use free sewing 
and okay, and I'm going to start sewing this together. So from top to bottom on the sleeve, then I'm going to go from top to bottom on the front panel. I'll free sew the side seam in the 3D window. It's equally as easy. For some of these areas, I'm going to use one to multiple sewing. So this is an option where I'm going to grab my one longest area first, click to end, and then I'm going to hold shift on my keyboard and that's going to attach to the front, Ooh. the front part of the sleeve. The sleeve is a raglan, so it hits the neckline and then back to the center back. Oh, those pieces are actually still floating in space. I'm going to use one to M sewing on the bottom edge. Just click to start on the longer edge, then hold shift. Click to start, click to end, click to start, and then click to end. I'm going to simulate and see what I have going on here. Oh, I have to also close up the center back and center front. So I'm going to use segment sewing on that. I can see it's just one whole segment. I forgot my sleeve inseam, so I'm going to close that after. If you're following along and want to open the same file, the last file I'm going through is 103, 1 to M and M to N sewing. So I already have that open. You can double click and open it. This is also going to be really good practice for a sleeve scenario. And we're going to go through the 1 to M and M to N options on this garment. The garment does have two different sleeves. This sleeve on the wearer's right side is all one piece that needs to attach to multiple other pieces. So in this case, I can use one to multiple. And this side on the right has multiple sleeve pieces that attach to multiple pieces on the body. So in that case, I'm going to use M to N sewing. So I'm just going to use the regular free sewing tool. And the trick is whatever area or corner or direction you move from on the sleeve you have to move the on the body in the same direction so for example I'm starting at the front corner of the sleeve and moving to the back clicking to end there then I'm going to hold shift and I have to start on the front body corner of the shell slide up and around down to the back corner. Once I've hit the back corner, I'm going to let go of shift on my keyboard. Okay, and then that sewing has attached. On the other side, I am going to use the drop down of M to N free sewing because my sleeve has three panels. So I'm going to consider that group one. I'm going to move from front to back on the sleeve and then from front around to back on the body. So first click to start, click to end, click to start, click to end, and then click to start, click to end on my last panel and hit enter on my keyboard to close that group. Then I'm going to move onto the body.
end at my back corner and then hit enter on the keyboard to close the sewing. So you see that all finished there. So when I sew this together in 3D, because this garment has already been partially simulated, I am going to pull some of these pieces apart to help myself a little bit so I can see the starting and ending corners of these areas. Usually you would be doing your sewing before you've already simulated, so your file will already kind of have this set up. So on the sleeve, I'm going to start at the front armhole corner, spin around, and then double click once I'm at the back corner. Then I'm going to hold shift on my keyboard, click once to start, double click to end, click to start, double click to end, and go around every armhole edge of the body panels. Once I've selected all those edges, I'm going to release shift on my keyboard and the sewing is going to complete. Next, I'm going to sew the other side of the sleeve together. And for this, I'm going to use the M to N version of segment sewing. So I'm going to grab that drop down and choose that option. So I'm going to start sewing the sleeve or selecting my first group. And I've learned from trial and error that basically when you're using this method, you want to start with your notch going in a downward position. I'm going to hover more towards the bottom part of the segment going down towards the sleeve corner and left click once, hover towards the left, click once. Now I'm hovering up so that notch is towards the top, click once, then hit enter to close that group. Now I'm going to move on to the shell and I'm hovering towards the bottom, left click, left click, left click, and then hit enter to close that group. And our garment comes together nicely. So whichever window you choose to sew in is personal preference. But sewing in Clo is easy and really versatile, and I hope that tutorial was helpful if you're just getting started. And that is the end of these sewing lessons. Thank you.